Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are here to talk about the AHRI certification and why it's important and to give you details about why it matters to you. Today, I am joined by a panel of wonderful people. We have Bill Tritzis, Vice President of Certification Programs at AHRI. We have Terry Lawrence, Principal and Mechanical Department Head at CMTA Boston. We have Tracy Putnam, Commercial Market Sales Manager at Alpha Laval US. And we have Martin Ohm, HVAC Business Development at Alpha Laval Global. Bill, would you like to go ahead and kick this off? Yes, thank you again for the opportunity to be in this panel. HRI certification is a 60 year old program that was put in place by the manufacturers long time ago just to level the playing field as they compete in the marketplace. Uh, it is now, it's so much demand around the world and uh, for a good reason. Why? Because it provides credible, accurate data for specifying engineers, for building owners. And uh, we, what we see is that now more and more it is required by regulatory agencies mm -hmm. as they try to implement energy efficiency regulators regulation, sorry. And to touch upon it from a perspective of a design engineer that provides an engineering services to client, you know, I'd like to reiterate what Bill said. He's talking about a level field from the manufacturer point of view to have um, something that's a database for um, validating the performance of a plate and frame as the engineer who has to specify and select and design a plate and frame for various applications, whether it's district cooling or it has to do with free cooling, or you know, it's a pressure interceptor or condensing um, um, division of a source of heat rejection to a system that needs some sort of heat rejection or heat transfer. The opportunity to spec at all times in all our projects, a AHRI mandated plate and frame is very important to us. It, it ensures that we are providing the owner the best possible opportunity to get the equipment that's going to operate as intended on our design, as well as what is necessary for the most energy efficiency approach. So you as an engineer and specifier, you have to make choices, okay, as to what type of equipment you are planning to install in any building design. These choices must be, must be informed choices. Absolutely. Um, you know, we work with our local vendor who works with us closely when we're selecting plate and frames specifically for the uh, approach temperature that we need for our specific process, as well as working with, uh, you know, making sure that we are looking at the most optimum selection for a plate and frame for size, fit, and um, price, as well as pressure drop. So it's very important for us to, to have something that's a standard that we can know that we are getting a insured, more or less guaranteed piece of equipment, similar to a chiller, cooling tower, or pump. You know, a, a plate and frame is what I consider a main infrastructure piece of HVAC equipment in all infrastructure designs that we do. So when it comes to kind of that peace of mind perspective, mm -hmm. how can a customer that's looking for a heat exchanger verify that it is AHRI certified? Uh, Tracy, I'd love for you to speak to this uh, sure. if you'd like to. Certainly. So AHRI certification is required by ASHRAE, Section 90.1. It Prior to 2013, it was still a would like to have, but as of 2013 and later, it is a requirement. So just as a secondary measure, I would encourage all engineers to write uh, the requirement for AHRI into their specification. And also, if there is any uncertainty, uh, all customers, owners, engineers are able to go onto the AHRI website to ensure that the manufacturer and the particular model that's being quoted is certified as well. And that's something we do. We've done it from the first year that AHRI introduced the certification based on gasketed plate and frames. You know, the first year it came out, it went in our very first project that had a plate and frame that year. And it's been in our standard spec since then. Yeah. You know, it's important to us and uh, it's something we look for even when we're doing peer review too. You know, we take a look at another engineering document from another firm, you know, often in our commissioning role. 
you know, I, I know that it's certainly important in uh, the United States, but what does that look like from an international standing, uh, from that certification perspective? Martin, I would love for you to, to speak to this. Yeah, well, of course, uh, working with um, uh, heat exchangers on the global scale, we see the need in all markets, basically, to, to have, a, as Bill uh, mentions, a level playing field. Um, which is not the case. Uh, as you also said, Tracy, in, in US, this is more or less mandatory, even though there are opportunities to validate and so on. But on, on a global scale, this has not been required um, for many markets until now, I would say. Uh, the major markets where we see uh, uh, getting traction on, on the certification would be Middle East and, and Asia, actually, these days. Europe is a bit of a slow starter. Um, European people, many of the European markets are very fond of having own standards. Um, and I have to clarify that the HRI certification program is very different from standards because there is there are many standards available, but the standards is just the standard that you refer to that I follow the standard, whereas the HRI certification pro program actually makes sure that all suppliers does follow the standard with the yearly testing and so on. So there's a big difference uh, from a standard or the certification programs. And hence we are a strong promoter of the certification program because it really validates and makes sure that everybody is, is uh, following the, the standards. So um, Europe is a bit slow. Uh, Middle East, I would say, well about 50 percent of the market i would say is actually hri certified in, in in the project business in the middle east today and for large scale cooling projects in in uh, mainly in china in asia i would say they are also uh, closing up to to 50 percent just as a rough estimation mm -hmm. so it is really we see the development last i would say last five years has really made an exponential growth of, of uh, traction in the markets outside of US, which is really, really nice to see. So when it comes to the process of getting certified, uh, what does it look like, uh, Bill, for a heat exchanger to become certified? Yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, and you know, when we're talking about collecting credible data or running a credible certification uh, program, the, uh, the, how, we, how we check the heat exchangers, okay? Before a manufacturer, before a manufacturer joins the HRI certification program, has to, we have to qualify the manufacturer in and their product. So basically what we do is, okay, well, we collect all the information they have in terms of the software that they use to, uh, uh, to run and, to, and rate the product. And not only that, but we actually test the product before the manufacturer is welcome to comes into the program. And that's where we, you know, we spend a lot of time making sure that, okay, the testing is accurate, the testing is repeatable, and, you know, we have a test procedure that is actually measures accurately, again, the, the product, uh, the product performance. And once the, uh, once the uh, uh, manufacturer is in the program, we have annual testing, so it's not a one-off testing, okay, we have year after year. Uh, testing of the manufacturer's models. And that's how, you know, continuously we verify the claimed ratings. Obviously, there are consequences for inaccurate ratings. And that's why, you know, we spend a lot of time and attention uh, not only to uh, test the product, to test it accurately, to make sure that uh, any changes in product ratings are reflected in the software that most manufacturers are using. And uh, that's, that's in a nutshell, you know, how the, the general process works. And I'd like to add to that, Bill, as a manufacturer and Terry, yourself as well as a customer, we have the ability to submit another manufacturer's to, to AHRI, another manufacturer's design to AHRI to be validated. So if you are ever uncertain, um, you can, it's much like a PE stamp. They'll evaluate the design, say, yes, this is um, per the, the latest version of the software. We agree. And then they stamp it. And it's just an, an added level of security. That's good. That, yeah. You know, I think from an engineering perspective, you know, we're not as finesse and we don't have the detailed instrumentation, nor are we in a lab. But, you know, often when we do a design, we do our commissioning or field check, as well as, you know, taking the instrumentation that we often spec, which is temperature uh, sensors. 
as well as a flow and as well as a DPT. So we are doing a check of what's happening in real life. And it's important to us specifically knowing that we've got the approach that we've you know, specified for heat transfer capability and also in particularly the, the pressure drop. So having something that's guaranteed through a program that's uh, doing a level playing field of competitive manufacturing in this time when energy efficiency is so important it is important to us as an engineering firm. So, you know, something I'm very curious about is <clears throat> let's assume that someone has or finds themselves with undersized equipment. I would love to kind of know what those long-term and short-term implications might be for going the undersized direction. So I can start and perhaps Martin can chime in on this. Uh, we often find uh, in our testing, some products that we test do, do not perform. So there are consequences, as I mentioned earlier, the manufacturer has to re-rate uh, the, the product. So basically it has to change the software and that new rating is displayed on the HRI directory where all certified products can be, uh, can be seen. So what that means, competitors can point to customers to, okay, look at that product. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer claimed it was X, now it's Y. Okay, so obviously no manufacturer wants, a credible manufacturer wants to have uh, their name and their product displayed on that list of re-rated, let's call derated uh, products. Okay, so uh, that's, you know, that's what we do. And in addition to that, there, uh, if, if we see products that fail testing, that means we have no confidence in the manufacturer's ability to rate the products properly. What that means is there is a penalty, another penalty test. Okay, and uh, an accumulation of multiple penalty uh, uh, violations, let's call them in the program, uh, uh, can lead to the expulsion of the manufacturer from the program. So there, is, there, is, there are some teeth behind the, the mm -hmm. program to discourage uh, inaccurate ratings. Mm -hmm. yeah, totally agree. And that, that's, of course, one of the things that I really like with a certification program, again, comparing it with a standard, that it's follow-up yearly testing. And when you don't uh, perform in the yearly, yearly test, you get derated. And of course, a derated unit in the market is not as competitive anymore. So, so that is the, let's say, not penalty, but HRI makes sure that everybody is actually in line with what they, what they specify, which is a very, very good thing. So uh, Terry, this one is actually for you. Uh, have you ever found yourself uh, in a place where you needed to validate a heat exchanger design to ensure that it was AHRI certified or properly sized for what you needed? Uh, we have validated it more through field measurements, you know, knowing that we can take a plate and frame heat exchanger and send it in to validate it, you know, as far as for AHR is helpful information. But we've run into the opportunity where we've had to take data. And if it appears to be undersized, it's something we need to address, knowing that there's an impact on uh, energy performance or a lack of opportunity to use the, the heat exchanger for the operation that it was intended. So it's happened to us, yes. You know, I think it's been a big difference. I do speak honestly and notice it, the fact that ever since the AHR certification for plate and frames has been on the horizon and it's become an active part of HVAC design, I think plate and frame performances um, have been good, you know, and that's because we heavily spec um, only manufacturers that are AHR certified. It, it has eliminated a lot of the issues that were probably here more than 15 years ago. That's been an important thing, having this certification. And that's, that's really, if I can break in, that's really why we are pushing this as a manufacturer uh, for the global scale as well. Because we've seen this trend in US where, where basically it's the same as we have in many other markets today that people from the industry are quoting things that are on the surface for sure. We know it. Right. And uh, uh, that situation you had before is what we have in other markets today. And we want to get, get rid of that, of course. We want to be able to, to quote what the customer is asking for. Some design engineer has calculated the real need and then it's up to us to supply the best unit that fulfills that need. But the market in many, many cases are not doing that. 
they are yeah. undersurfacing intentionally to get away with a cheaper cheaper quote and uh, yeah. that's the strength again of hri certification that we let a third party uh, validate and ensure that everybody is supplying the same performance because that's what matters to our customers it, what matters is the kilowatts you get and at what pressure drop that is end of the day martin you were telling me about a story the other day the district cooling loop and what happened uh, with with those heat exchangers how it impacted the whole system yeah yeah okay i will can just uh, uh, a small story about the the I would say the need <laughs> that we see in other markets. This is actually a very local thing. It's a district cooling network very close to where we have our office. And um, over a long time, there has been a standard how to design uh, substations for district cooling. We've tried to put the NHRI certification into the, the specs, the standard specs of the Swedish District Heating Association, which all district heating providers in the market is, is referring to. But until now, it has been uh, every second time we see uh, an update, it is suggested to be a demand for HRI, but then it's re replaced in the end always to be, it can be, or it's preferred to be HRI certified, which means that none of the units are certified. And for sure, I know very many of them are undersurfaced. And we have this case in our neighboring city where basically the district heating, the district cooling provider has designed a system for let's say 100 customers roughly. It's not a huge uh, network. And all of the units more or less have been undersurfaced, uh, which means that they don't perform temperature wise as they should. So the delta T or the cool or the uh, gradient of temperature from the inlet and outlet is instead of being, uh, let's say, eight to nine degrees, they are more like seven to eight degrees. So they lose less, more or less one degree uh, out of eight. So the, and the consequence, of course, is that they, they need to push through 12% more water in the pipes. And of course, the design of the pipe is made to connect these hundred customers. And when, of course, they reach then the maximum flow rate, they can push through the pipes already when they have like 85 uh, customers connected. So in the end, they've designed and calculated a grid for 100 customers. And when they reach 85 connected customers, they just couldn't connect anymore. So for their business case, it, it's a mess, of course. If you design something for 100 customers and you can only get the payment from 85, well, you can guess what happens with the with the financials for, for yeah. that uh, system. So that's a really clear, you know, uh, consequence. What 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 happens in the grid when you when you don't perform or when the equipment uh, cannot perform as as intended? And that's a good point. I think moving into the future with you know electrification coming, district cooling plants and heating plants. You know what you're going to be seeing is central plants based on heat pumps. Where you're going to have a centralized heat pump and I think plate and frames are going to continue to be a big presence in what are going to become global as well as in this market the U.S. market where there's more opportunities to use plate and frames for that kind of element and having something that's certified to know you're getting the most optimum uh, operation for something that's doing uh, utility kind of service or you know centralized district service uh, is very important. We, I've been involved in cogen combined heating uh, and power plant projects where we specified plate and frames and having a certified plate and frame is very critical when it's coming back to maximize the efficiency of a cogen, you know, in an overall both thermal and electric and that's an indicative example where the value of having an HRI certified plate and frame is extremely important. We're doing something that we're beginning to get involved in and it doesn't necessarily require an AHR plate and frame, but we may do it. It's a small little one. And if we're in the plate that's a gasket, we'll take a look at doing, um, you know, something on a tank that's a research tank for sonar for a, a client of ours. If it's not sufficiently where I can get into a gasket plate and frame, then I won't have an opportunity, I don't think, because it's going to be a braised plate and frame. But I do see that being something that's important. And Tracy, I don't know. Do you think there's any opportunity in the international codes that they'll mimic and parallel what's in ASHRAE 
Quite honestly, I can't comment on the on the okay. regulations. Um, I, I can comment on you know where I see things going here in the in the U.S. I think that green buildings and sustainable construction are going to become more and more prevalent. I don't know about you guys, but I have swapped out all the light bulbs in my house for LEDs. So along those lines, so we have LEED certification here in the U.S. and and that measures things like the, um, the construction impact to the site and the location and the indoor air quality and where are the materials coming from and what's the resulting carbon footprint of bringing those materials in. Uh, but where we come into play as a manufacturer of a plate and frame, it's the, the efficiency of the HVAC system itself. So something that I found kind of mind blowing that I learned recently is that two to 3% of the world's carbon footprint is created by inefficiencies in HVAC systems, which is um, really pretty wild to me. So if, if you have a properly designed AHRI certified heat exchanger, you can reduce the building's life cycle impact and earn points towards LEED certification. So I hope to see more and more of that. And I can chime in on that as well, because from what we see, we have a global view uh, outside of the US, uh, obviously, as well, uh, with various offices uh, in China and the Middle East. So uh, obviously, climate change and energy efficiency are the drivers be behind uh, sustainability. And that, you know, we see more and more around the world where governments trying to implement energy efficiency policies, okay, having components like critical components to any HVAC system like liquid to liquid heat exchanges, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to have a way to verify the performance of these critical systems. Okay. And of course, on the other hand, as you mentioned, Tracy, uh, you, you see good building practices, okay, moving in that right direction, that meaning the lead certification, more and more lead cert certifications around the world are required in buildings. And, you know, how can the industry help you know, in all the industry can help in all these uh, on these all these initiatives. How can we help? We can help with accurate performance data of equipment, and that's why your third-party certification is critical, uh, either in lead or verifying maps, many minimum energy performance standards around the world. So. I would love to kind of talk about the certification process a little bit and to kind of know what efficiencies we're finding, what ways are we are we looking to improve uh, the certification process, Bill? Well, certainly there is uh, there is improvement. Uh, Martin alluded to that outside of the U.S., you see a lot of market pressures uh, where liquid to liquid exchanges, liquid to liquid heat exchanges, are presented in bids undersized. Okay, and, and without really third-party uh, certification requirements. So on our on our side, what we can do at HRI, we need to improve how we run our program. How when we see suspected ratings on a product that we test, we don't only test it at the very temperature that we have chosen. If we see it failing or not performing as claimed, we check other points along the performance curve of the product. That's where we're trying to uh, to spend quite a bit of time so and test that means testing additional points okay just to make sure that we have a, the pro the proper map let's say of performance rating for the product and, uh, and in addition to that making sure that these changes are carried in the software that the manufacturers use and promote uh, to around the world to engineers to sell their products. Okay, so that's where we spend time trying to see, okay, are these changes that we found in testing carry, are carried through in the, in the software that the manufacturer is using? And these are some of the changes that we recently have undertaken to strengthen, let's say, the program. What about Bill, are you looking, the testing conditions themselves, I know we've discussed this a bit, um, will they be changing as well? Well, uh, again, it's up to, the, up to the manufacturers who sit around the table to decide, you know, what is the best way to, you know, to test the product. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, yes, they could change, they could change. But for us at AHRI, it's testing at one uh, temperature profile is not good enough anymore if we see the product is not performing. Understood, that makes sense. Thank you. 
I think a really <clears throat> interesting point here as well, uh, which you say, uh, we, which we should underline on, on the global scale is that uh, just to let's say clarify, not clarify, but validate again, that that's the, the feeling I'm having that HRI certified is the route forward and to ensure that we actually do get what we ask for. And again, leaning back a little bit against um, people like you, Terry, who is doing a lot of work to ensure that whole systems are operate or designed in in a in a good way. We see a lot of these um, uh, where we uh, sorry language not my favorite thing today. Uh, we, we are pushing for for HRI certified heat exchangers in some markets, and we always get the feedback from the customers that the heat exchangers becomes very much more expensive. And we know for sure that the certification program, as such, adds on the fee and and the testing and so on adds on a very small uh, amount of of uh, cost on the unit itself. And that tells us only one thing: that that customer is used to buy something that costs much less. So. In reality, with HRI, they get what they asked for, but they are used to buy something completely different. And we talk many times about something that costs roughly 30% less, mm -hmm. which relates to maybe having 30 to 40% less surface inside the heat exchanger. So that is where the market are, um, or where the market is. And um, I think uh, Bill uh, from HRI and ourselves, we are strong promoters. Uh, let's ensure that more markets <laughs> understands the value of, of having a third part. I would say being a sales person myself, of course you can trust me, but I wouldn't trust myself. I would trust someone like Bill instead who ensures that I do the right thing. That I think that's the best way of doing it. Don't let suppliers tell you what to buy let someone else a third party validates that what you've calculated you will get uh, you know, yeah. simple as that so then it's up to us as suppliers to give you the best solution on those conditions well as we go to close this panel uh, i want to go ahead and make sure that our viewers who stop by to learn all this valuable information that you've given them i want to make sure that they walk away with that single most important thought, but not just one. I would love to have it from the perspective of all of our panelists today. So my last question is, why should it matter to them? I'll go ahead and start with Tracy. Okay. I would say the one thing is total cost of ownership. So not just the heat exchanger itself, but the cost of operating the system and the efficiency of the system. Now, a couple tenths of a degree and, and one PSI could potentially result in a heat exchanger that's 20, 25% undersurfaced. So if we put that in terms of something more tangible, a 1200 ton heat exchanger that's 20% undersurfaced, uh, that could result in fifteen to twenty thousand dollars more operating costs each year. So, had the heat exchanger been properly designed, AHRI certified to begin with, it would pay for itself in one to two years. So, total cost of ownership. We we talked about sustainability. We talked about good building practices and the increasing demand in lead, in lead certification. That that puts pressure on engineers to make informed decisions what type of equipment they need to install in any given uh, good designed building okay and these decisions need to be made need to be made with accurate performance data of these critical uh, components that, in, that includes liquid to liquid heat exchangers that's where third party certification can provide that assurance to the engineer but also to the buyer who spent so much money in uh, in in this uh, in the building design, mm -hmm. I think Tracy and Bill have aptly worded and accurately worded in detail the importance of AHRI certification for gasketed plate and frames. As a design engineer who specifies them, selects them, and has to analyze the best opportunity to maximize the efficiency for our various applications for our clients. Um, it's insurance is what the AHRI provides. It's insurance knowing that what we are assuming for our design um, criteria is going to come to fruit in real life operation. And it helps us uh, know that we are confidently doing a design that's going to prove itself in real life operation. It also gives the owner that assurance that we've given them the best opportunity possible for a piece of equipment that has been certified and validated 
instead of not having anything that could substantiate the performance and efficiency, which is so critical to clients these days. The wording we could use is basically specify according to your demands, specify what you need, and then trust HR right, to ensure that everybody is, is quoting what you need or what you have specified. I think that's as simple as that. We need a third party to uh, straighten up the market. And we already have that third party, so let's go ahead. Not only for US, not only for HVAC, I would say even, we can use it for all other water-to-water applications as well on a global scale, period. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and to really educate our viewers on why it's important. If you guys have any questions after listening to our panel of experts, feel free to reach out to an Alpha Laval expert and they absolutely will be there to help you. Thank you very much, guys. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.